Hello everyone. So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So this is actually a second part of software testing. Okay. So there are basically two types of testing that you would move here in your career. One is manual testing and another is automation testing. Manual testing means everything needs to be done by a tester itself. Right? They won't be taking help of any of the tools or scripts or uh, you know uh, the automation to test a particular software. They would be completely doing, they would be executing each and every test case by themselves, right? Now for automation testing means, um, you would be using few of the tools. Let us say if you are testing a web application, you might use Selenium. If you are using mobile application, you might use APM, right? Then uh, if you are trying to automate a uh, robotic process automation, uh, then you might use RPA tool. Right, something like this. if you want to automate desktop, web, or both kinds of applications, then you can go for RPA tool. Right, so so automation also has a variety in it, based on the tools, based on the technology, and based on the application that you want to automate. You can have a right choice of tools available, and you can do automation testing. Now, everything cannot be automated. Yes, automation testing makes your uh, work very easy. It is reliable and it is quick also because manual testing might take more time compared to automation testing. That is why as you would be making your career, so I would uh, request you to learn automation tools also. At least Selenium with Java is a most popular framework available and in many of the organizations, the automation is uh, made completely on the basis of Selenium with Java or Selenium with Python. So any of these tools, if you would learn, then definitely it is like a icing on the cake for the career. Okay, but you can start your career as a manual tester, understand the concepts of software testing, understand why it is required, right? Understand all the W type of questions behind it. Because see manual testing is having its own significance and automation testing is having its own significance. Sometimes the use cases are so complex that it might take more time to automate rather than just, you know, uh, manually testing it during the release. So there are organizations who uh, would go for at least 60 to 70 percent of automation. Once it is done, then they would tell, OK, now we are in a good shape. We are in a good quality to release on a particular timeline. Okay. Because even every, everyone knows hundred percent of automation is not at all possible. Okay. And there are a lot of jobs available in the industry uh, for manual testing as well as for automation testing as well. Okay. Now in today's current scenario, there is a lot of opportunity that is uh, for as debts software development and test. Okay. So these people are, the people who are actually automating it and they know what is happening at the back end of the software. They know the architecture, they know the technology on what the software is being made. Okay. So this was a, a pretty simple difference between manual testing as automate versus automation testing. And as the name itself suggests, right? Automation means it would happen automatically. Manual means it would be manual. Okay. Now here is one more testing technique, oh, sorry, testing difference that is black box testing and white box testing. Okay. Now in a black box testing, uh, you don't need to have the knowledge of the internal structure of the code. Okay. While in white box testing, the internal structure of the code knowledge is required. Okay. So in a black box testing, basically a tester would be given an application and uh, they would be having a list of requirements from a client side or from a customer side that these are the XYZ things that I require from the uh, software. And you have to just test that software and give the testing results to them. While in white box testing, a tester is expected to know the internal structure of the code. So they would be, uh, they should have an idea of on what architecture, what is the implementation, how, how is the implementation done and what is the programming uh, language used whether it is .NET, whether it is Java. So this, this actually, this knowledge of, you know, 
white box testing helps tester to actually break the software and uh, it is mainly applicable uh, so black box testing is mainly applicable to uh, testing such as acceptance testing or when you go for system testing right while white box testing is applicable to unit testing and integration testing okay unit testing is basically you uh, test component individually okay now for example if i give you a, a pen to be tested right so there is a cap of a pen there is a body of a pen you will uh, throw the pen and uh, you will see whether it is breaking or not then if even if the uh, refill needs to be changed then whether the pen is it uh, are we able to use that pen properly right so so unit testing is we tested the cap we tested the body individually and integration testing means uh, we need to test pen as a whole okay whether you are able to uh, close the cap properly or not okay together as a full uh, body of a pen if you are keeping it uh, in a vessel of say some temperature then is it getting burst or something like that okay so unit testing versus integration testing again these all terms also you will hear a lot in your career okay so uh, both are very very important from a software testing release and also release point of view in unit testing basically uh, individual parts of the software are being tested while in integration is we would see how the software is uh, working how the software behavior is uh, happening the functionality is not getting affected when the software is integrated with some system or uh, let us say you can take any of the os whether the software is working on a particular os let it be windows mac even if it's a mobile application then you can go for android ios okay so this is how integration testing takes place and you can also take one more example over here is uh, consider a software which is having a particular uh, functionality related to the uh, hr that is uh, what is the name of the hr and what all recruiting positions they are looking so this is one of the uh, page available on that software now there is a similar page available for finance team as well okay what is the name of the members those are there in the finance team what are their email addresses what are their contact details okay now this whole software uh, with the pages of finance as well as hr is termed uh, as an uh, as a some kind of uh, you can name it as xyz test software okay now when you do integration testing you have to uh, validate the aspects from an hr page as well as from a finance page while if you do unit testing you have to test only hr page at a time and you have to test only finance page at a time okay so this is how this uh, is the difference is there between unit testing and integration testing okay so hope this black box testing versus white box testing this difference would be clear to you now moving further is high level testing and in that we would let us see first functional testing now functional testing is actually testing all the features and functions of a system to ensure the business requirements are met okay now this is a very uh, ba basic testing whenever you are given a software to test in your career or at the time of interview try to find out functional issues first that would actually rank you higher compared to the other people who are coming for the interviews okay if you find some functional issue let us say for a very basic example uh, we are testing a software which is uh, which is checking the attendance of a employee right if an employee comes at 9 am in the morning and if an employee leaves the organization at 6 pm okay so this is how the software is tracking it okay so the the basically the motivation of the software is to uh, to calculate the time and it needs to make sure that the time timings are properly entered because on the basis of that the salary will be credited to the employee right now the functional issue over here might be that uh, a 
person when he enters into the organization it is 9 am but when he leaves the organization at that that time also the timings are taken as 9 am only and then there can be an issue with the time zone a person is uh, working in an ist time zone but the uh, but the software takes up in a pst time zone okay so these are couple of the examples of functional issues and if you will uh, get a good command on finding out functional issues definitely you will uh, surely you know make a very good career in your software testing okay so goal of the functional testing again is to make sure the application meets the intended functional specifications okay intended functional specifications means for example consider a math calculator okay now we all know 2 plus 2 is 4 but the client needs 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 so programming would be done in that manner the code would be written in that manner that 2 plus 2 result makes 5 so you have to make sure that okay this result 5 is only appearing is only displayed when we do the calculation of 2 plus 2 okay so we have to be very sure that the software meets the specifications that are laid out in the development document okay user commands whatever the data manipulation is there the search bar is there business process all these are part of functional testing consider a very simple scenario for functional testing you can uh, we all must be aware about notepad application okay now the task is to test the save feature of notepad application okay now what is the procedure you will open a notepad either from a, a run window or you can right click on a computer and open the notepad now when you are trying to save the file it should allow you to give the file with uh, your desired name okay every time the default name should not be there but uh, but over here the the developer made a mistake of you know uh, keeping a default name always on the as the name of the document while saving it so this is actually a functional defect okay because user cannot change the file name just because the edit box is disabled okay so this is a one more example of functional testing so this is actually an exercise for you i want uh, you people who are actually watching this video to come up across all to pen down all the cases or you can put a comment also that would be highly appreciable on this uh, youtube video link with what all cases that would come to your mind based on the functional testing point of view okay and if any cases are coming to you from a different testing point of view let us say from a gui based or from a security testing based then please uh, note down all those in the in the comment section of this video okay so i would end this video over here uh, happy to help you uh, stay tuned for more videos okay thank you for your time